Hey y'all, today we're going to learn how to use Material Editor in Effect House. Material Editor is a powerful node-based creation tool that allows you to build and manipulate materials ranging from simple color modifications to intricate textures and finishes. With Material Editor, you can create materials ranging in appearance from hyper-realistic wood to blocky cartoons. You can also use Material Editor to create post-process materials that make your camera feed look super pixelated. The possibilities are as endless as your imagination. So get ready to materialize your ideas as we show you how to use this nifty feature. Like Visual Scripting, Material Editor is a node-based creation tool that lets you string together nodes with flows of logic to achieve your desired result. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a custom material that you can apply to the 3D hair model in the dynamic chain template. First, let's find the dynamic chain template we want to use, and then open it. We're using this template because it has a cool 3D hair model that we can apply a new material to, with neat results. After the template loads, click on the hair object in the scene panel. You'll notice that there are two pieces of hair in the front that both use the preset template material called hair mat. We're going to use Material Editor to create our own material and replace it. Of course, Effect House has built-in materials that you can add from the Assets panel, but Material Editor has the advantage of allowing you to build materials completely from scratch, giving you full control over the final result. So, to create a new material, click on the Add button in the Assets panel, hover over Material Graph, and then select Empty Material Graph. This opens up the Material Editor in the same space as the Visual Scripting panel. You can switch between these panels by clicking on the tabs. You can also rename your material. So let's call ours New Metallic Material, since we eventually want to create metallic looking hair. All right, so you've probably already noticed that Material Editor looks pretty similar to Visual Scripting. They are similar in the sense that Material Editor also uses nodes with inputs and outputs to create flows of logic. To add a node in Material Editor, you can click on the Add button, or right-click on the panel and select Add Node, or simply double-click anywhere on the panel. For our new material, we're going to go to Material Mode and select the standard PBR shading model. There are several different material modes to choose from, but we're choosing standard PBR because it uses physics-based rendering to create a realistic response to light. Next, we'll link the standard PBR node's color output to the shader node's color input, which creates a generic standard PBR material. This shader node controls what the material looks like with your configured lighting conditions. Since we have a basic material created, we can apply it to our hair. All you need to do is click on the hair object, click on the material field in the inspector panel, and then choose the new material. You'll notice that since we use the physics-based rendering material as our base, the hair responds realistically to environmental lighting, like when you play around with the scene's lighting. Now, let's get into the fun part. One of the cool things about Material Editor is that you can use nodes to customize the material's properties. When we click on the new material in the Assets panel, we'll notice that it doesn't have many properties yet. As we continue to add new properties to our material, they show up in the Inspector panel. Let's change the base color of the material using the albedo input. To do so, I can click on the My Items button. Then, I can click on the Add button next to Parameter, and then select Color. To add this color parameter as a node, I can simply click on the plus sign next to it. Nice! However, you'll notice that when I try to connect the color parameter node to the albedo input, the line turns red. This is because the color output's data type doesn't match the albedo input's data type. 
That means I need to convert the color parameters data type to match the albedo input using a node called cast. Right now, the cast node is converting the color data into a number, which is not what we want. Since albedo is made up of X, Y, and Z values, to fix this, we can click on the cast node, click on the details button, and then change the cast type to vector three. Now we can connect the cast node to the albedo input. You'll notice that when we do so, a color property shows up in the inspector panel. I'll go ahead and choose a color. Now, let's add parameters to the remaining inputs. Our hair doesn't look metallic yet, since we haven't set up the metallic and roughness properties, which are the two key factors to creating a metallic appearance. So, we'll click on the My Items button and add a float parameter, which is basically just a number that has a decimal point to match the data type of the metallic input. I'll rename this to metallic. Add the node and then connect it to its respective input. We'll see the metallic property show up in the inspector panel so we can change its value to one which corresponds to a shiny, metallic appearance. Next, we'll add another float parameter. Name it Roughness, add the node, and then connect it to the Roughness input, which defines the surface texture. As you play around with the Roughness value in the inspector panel, you'll notice how it affects the reflectivity of the material. We'll go with a value of 0.2, which is not too shiny, but not too dull. And there you have it. You've just created your first custom material. Keep in mind that the possibilities for customization are endless. You can make materials that look like wood or plastic simply by adjusting the metallic and roughness properties. Here's an advanced tip. You can also use textures instead of color as an input to Albedo. Let me demonstrate. All you gotta do is add a sample texture 2D node and connect it to the Albedo input. Next, you can add a texture 2D parameter. Let's name this one texture base color. Then, just add the node and connect it to the Texture 2D input. Next, you can just connect the sample texture's RGB vector output to the albedo input. Now you have a texture-based property that allows you to use a texture as your base color. I'll just use one of the template's pre-made textures here. And that's all you need to do. Now that we've covered the basics of creating a customizable material, let's go one step further and use visual scripting to make our material interactive. Let's say we want to gradually make the hair change color after a person taps on the screen. First, I'll need to connect the color parameter back to the albedo input. Then, I'll go to the visual scripting panel and then Add our materials set color variable from the inspector panel. Then I'll add a finger touch one point node to represent tapping on the screen. Now I need a node to control the change in color over a short period of time, like three seconds. So I'll go ahead and add the transit by time node, change the type to color and then modify what we want the color to change into. Then we'll define a duration of three seconds. All that's left to do is connect the nodes. We'll make the finger touch start the transition 
and then connect the transit node to the set color variable. Now, when I tap on my screen, I'll see the material change color over the course of three seconds. Now you know how to use Material Editor to build custom materials from scratch and make them interactive using visual scripting. Custom materials aren't just limited to 3D models. You can also use Material Editor to create post-process materials that modify your camera output, from metallic hair to camera filter effects. The possibilities are endless. Remember to experiment and have fun. For more information about Material Editor, be sure to check out our documentation at effecthouse.tiktok.com.